I actually want to go uh, to my next guest uh, pretty quickly because I know he is uh, a really busy guy and short on time, and that's Congressman uh, Scott Peters, who's a Democrat from California. Hello, Congressman. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm well, sir. How are you? I'm great. Good. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me. No problem. Listen, I know that you a, are a part of the New Democratic uh, Coalition. What is that? So we're 61 uh, Democrats who uh, have um, Democratic um, share Democratic values and are concerned about the uh, growth in the economy. Uh, we're pro-growth, um, and um, I think probably uh, some would say more moderate, uh, more moderate Democrats on business issues. Moderate Democrat on business issues. Are you? That sounds like a rare breed in many, many ways. Well, you know, uh, we we don't try to hide out. We'd love to, <laughs> we'd love to uh, find more Republicans to work with us on uh, things like uh, health care. We just had a big. Um, we we sort of led an effort to find the answers on health care in the absence of a serious discussion among Republicans to uh, that would that would include us, um, and uh, came up with some good ideas. Uh, to help stabilize the markets. That's the kind of thing that we see ourselves doing. We think our role is really important in this Congress where there's so much division and not enough working together. Absolutely. And when you say working together, meaning in a bipartisan fashion, I want to talk about NAFTA, uh, because as I understand it, that is something that's really big on the uh, new Democrat coalition uh, agenda. Is that correct? Yeah, well, we have a we are, are generally a more pro-trade uh, part of the, the, the caucus in the Congress. And um, uh, here in San Diego in particular, I'm a supporter of uh, expanded trade with Mexico. It's very important to our economy down here uh, and across the border. So that sounds like a natural constituency for President Trump, uh, because as you know, he campaigned on uh, perhaps maybe renegotiating NAFTA. Uh, we had a guest on the program earlier uh, this week who said, who's basically said, look, NAFTA was negotiated back in 1992. Um, clearly, uh, a lot of the trade laws, a lot of trade practices uh, need to be um, need to be addressed in a new NAFTA renegotiation because they're just outdated. Uh, President Trump has said that NAFTA is unfair to the American worker. Um, do you believe that perhaps maybe you can work with this president on a NAFTA renegotiation? Well, you know, I, I've said I'd work with anybody. I think a lot of us um, have that attitude. We'll work with anybody has a good idea. We come here to solve problems and to create economic growth and if he ever will come to us with something instructive, we'll be happy to do that. That certainly didn't happen in healthcare. Um, and, you know, for us, you know, we had 28 people, 28 of us, uh, at least in the New Dem coalition, were pro uh, Trans Pacific Partnership, which of course included Mexico and Canada, and did many of the things that we'd all like to see done with NAFTA to modernize it and to create a better playing field for American workers. So, where do you think? Um, so, we're, we're open to it, absolutely. Sir, what do you think is the outlook uh, on trade? What do, what do you think is the future of trade in general? Well, you know, I think the sooner we recognize, uh, and this certainly wasn't the, the 2016 campaign rhetoric, that, you know, almost all consumers are outside of our borders. And, and um, the TPP dealt with 40% of the world's economy uh, that was not, uh, not American markets. It, it's a way to sell American goods into those places, way to make them more attractive, more competitive. Uh, you know, the, the rhetoric of the 2016 uh, um, race, and frankly, on both sides, I was disappointed in Secretary Clinton, was more uh, you know, turning inward. And um, I think, uh, you know, we've got to recognize right now that for us to be competitive, for us to put our workers to work, we have to sell our goods overseas. That's why these trade agreements are are important, and we got to get them. We got to get them done, and we got to get them right. Well, and to your point, sir, about making sure that they're they're right, and obviously representing the American worker. You know, what do you think, from your perspective, are some of the most important things that the administration, or quite frankly, that USTR, or, or quite frankly, you and your colleagues in the Congress should focus on uh, with re with regards to trade? Is there a specific provision? Is are there specific goods? Uh, a lot of po folks out there are saying that Canada is kind of like the redheaded stepchild. Uh, that they've often yeah. gotten overlooked. I mean, is there anything in specific? Well, let's let's do a specific example with res respect to Mexico, and then talk about Canada. Uh, Mexican workers uh, have a hard time organizing. They're not getting compensated that well. Uh, what that means is that the goods that they make don't build in costs that American workers have to have to bear uh, with the costs that we we sell here. And one of the things that happened in the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the TPP, was there were 
there were real agreements by Mexico to raise the living standards for Mexican workers against whom our workers compete. That would have leveled the playing field. That's the kind of thing we should have in NAFTA if we renegotiate it. The problem is, and this goes a little bit to Canada, we don't have the leverage that we had when we were, when we were offering 11 uh, international markets to these countries. Now it's just a three-party deal again. And what are we going to say to, to um, Canada to get them to come along when they were looking forward to being able to sell dairy into Japan as part of TPP? Now we're just talking about Mexico and, and Canada and the United States. Um, we've set ourselves back a little bit, but uh, but you know, clearly um, you know, Canada, had, Canada has interests too. And when you talk about renegotiating NAFTA, it is a three-party agreement. Um, and I, I think we put ourselves in a little bit more difficult space in um, – in really tackling the international trade uh, program uh, problems by just limiting ourselves to NAFTA. Although, you know, certainly we should modernize NAFTA as best we can uh, working with the three countries. Congressman, any general reaction to the USTR officially notifying uh, you and your colleagues that they plan to renegotiate NAFTA? Well, you know, I don't know. I, I'm getting, getting a little skeptical of the uh, Notifications. I mean, I've heard we're going to do tax reform. I've heard we're going to do health care. Uh, I heard we are going to have we had an infrastructure week that I think lasted half an hour. <laughs> uh, so I, I, um, you know, I'm really frustrated. You know, apart from all the craziness we've heard and all the terrible stuff that's going on around Charlotte, uh, Charlottesville, and the reaction of the president, what's getting lost is we ha- we're sent to do the business of the American people and to, to improve the economy and to improve the prospects for, for the futures and retirements and educations of our uh, constituents and, and the chaos at the other end of Pennsylvania Avenue in the white house is just stunning and, and appalling and frightening. And so I, um, I sure, I love the, I love the idea. We're going to renegotiate NAFTA. I too agree. It has to be improved to put our workers in a position to compete. Uh, but do I believe it? You know, now I'm, I'm, I'm sort of getting to be a little bit like, you know, I believe it when I see it. Understood. Understood. And well, and to that point, Congressman, I want to now uh, maybe transition to, to your constituents in the, in the rest of the country. And that is uh, there. Can, can you understand uh, perhaps maybe the farmer out there uh, who is literally living from crop to crop from season to season, has no savings. The only asset they have is the family farm. Uh, or perhaps, quite frankly, someone in the inner city who uh, every time they go into the store and, and purchase a, uh, a piece of clothing, it says made in China, um, where they're just so frustrated and they're so angry and they don't understand these trade deals and they don't understand um, uh, why it has to be this way. And when they hear politicians say this is good for the American worker, meaning trade, and good for mm-hmm. the American economy, can, can you explain to them the skepticism when they say, well, sir, I don't, I don't see this. I, I don't see how this, this benefits me and my job. Right. Well, there's two parts to it. One, I think President Obama did very well, which is to say, listen, we can't, uh, you know, if, if people are taxing our goods, but we're not taxing theirs, um, you know, we're at a disadvantage. If other, if other countries have to abide by environmental and worker standards, don't have to abide by environmental worker standards that we have to abide by and we pay for, our goods are going to be uh, less competitive, and that means there's going to be less production in the United States and fewer people working. So I think that that's, that's fairly evident. Um, and the, I think the thing we've failed to do, do as well is deal with the dislocations that trade, trade uh, does. So it does, even though um, the, the bottom line uh, of um, the United States shows a huge benefit from trade agreements, there are communities – that have been displaced, and we have to be honest about that, and we have to recognize that that that, that there will be some, um, you know, there's, there's some adjustment, and there's some real there's some real need in some communities for assistance and help. We didn't do that as well, but um, of course, you know, the, the the rhetoric of the Sanders campaign and the Trump campaign was so fiery and anti-trade, it was hard for any. A discussion to get through. And of course, I was really disappointed that uh, Mrs. Clinton, who seemed to have been involved in negotiating that agreement, uh, she took the same route. Wait. So, uh, you know, we're just going to have to keep at it. But until we recognize that we have to get we have to get our goods into these markets and the trade agreements can be a way to do that. I think we're, we're always going to be um, uh, people are going to be um, angry with uh, the wages not rising and having to compete against, you know, uh, 
foreign competition that's undercutting them. Congressman, when you speak of the rhetoric uh, from Secretary Clinton and Senator Sanders, do you think that Elizabeth Warren uh, helps the conversation? You know, she is very, very pro-worker. Uh, she often talked about, at least last year she did, I don't hear her talking about it this much this year, she talked about uh, how the system is rigged and, and, and the whole nine yards. Do you think her rhetoric helps the conversation? Well, I, you know, I really respect uh, Senator Warren, and she's got her own views. I, I, I would just say that um, for me, it's hard for me to see how we're being pro-worker if we're really not fighting to get all the goods that our workers are making into other uh, other markets. And I, I, she may have a different idea about how to do that, but that's certainly um, – I th- certainly think that renegotiating NAFTA and international trade agreements like the TPP are ways to do that that would um, – you know, that would really benefit workers. And so I uh, like, and I, I do, I think we, we've not appreciated the dislocation that happens in some communities. Um, I think we also have to deal honestly with automation, globalization, uh, and, um, you know, things that would have happened with or without trade agreements uh, that are difficult on workers. But, you know, let's, I, I think part of the conversation has to be, what are we going to do to make sure that our goods are attractive for other countries to buy because that's where most of the consumers are. And that's good for work. Last question for you, Congressman, before we let you go. I want to talk about civility and also in the context of the new Democratic coalition. Um, You know, for the last week, we've been talking about civility. We've been talking about uh, the need to kind of raise the conversation in a more civil way. Um, I'm curious, do you think that's um, that's needed with you between you and your colleagues, meaning on the Republican side of the aisle? And is there anything specifically that the new Democratic coalition is doing to help in that regard? We've met with the um, our, our counterpart Tuesday group, the moderate, um, the moderate uh, Republicans, and uh, we, you know, he, we really tried to. We met with Paul Ryan. We met with Kevin Brady. We've tried to to uh, extend a hand of professionalism to the other side of the aisle. We feel like, in many cases, um, our uh, our members are closer to the center and to the answers than the the thirty or forty. Uh, Freedom Caucus people that they have. Um, and, you know, the, in, inside the Congress, it's not mean. It's just that, uh, it's, you know, it's just we, we've got to get together and, and get some problems solved. So that's why I was proud of what we've done in healthcare. We hope that that'll turn into some, to a bill and some progress um, on uh, on that this, this fall so we can help fight to keep premiums down. And we'll keep working at that. I think that's what we're committed to. And I think that's what American people expect and deserve. There you have it. Congressman Scott Peters, Democrat from California. Thank you very much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Rob. All right. Have a great day. All right, folks, after the break, we're going to take more of your calls uh, because I know a lot of you have some thoughts about civility. Uh, A lot of you have some thoughts about Charlottesville. A lot of you, quite frankly, have some thoughts about uh, about NAFTA and free trade and whether or not it is working for you on behalf of the American worker. Give us a call at 855-486-1776. We'll be right back.